Sujita, good morning. Welcome to this interview session. And then you are joining right from University of Manitoba from Canada. And I am still sitting in the capital city of India, New Delhi. Most welcome to this interview session. And just tell me about the University of Manitoba and why the student can could choose the University of Manitoba. Hi everyone, my name is Sujitra. I'm a student recruitment officer at the University of Manitoba for the undergraduate program. So we're very, very um, thankful for um, Mr. Kachuria for inviting us to be here. And I'm going to be giving you some information that hopefully helpful and relevant to you as you are choosing a destinations to come and study abroad. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm going to be talking about um, a little bit about University of Manitoba. I'm going to share a screen here so we all can see, okay? Yes. There you go. All right, perfect. Good. So the University of Manitoba and um, Okay, so the image that you see right here is one of our the University of Manitoba main campuses. The U of M is the largest and the only medical doctoral schools um, in the province of Manitoba. We are the largest institutions and we are uh, public institutions. Um, so the funding that come to our universities, majority of it go towards research. So that to say, we are a um, member of the U15, Canada's 15 research intensive universities. What this mean to you and for our students is that the, um, there's a lot of opportunity for students to engage in the uh, research opportunities. And as you can see, this is where um, we are like a factory of knowledge in our province. And in addition to this, we are also the only architectural and law school in the province as well. And of course, these two programs are open for international uh, students, okay? On campus, we have uh, around 29,000 students on campus and we offer over 100 academic programs. We are also home to a dynamic community of indigenous students on campus as well. And for those of you who wonder where we are located, we are located in the um, capital city called Winnipeg in the province of Manitoba. In terms of where it is in Canada, it's located in a central location there. And why would students be interested in choosing U of M? There's so many reasons. First of all, in terms of the province itself, the uh, province of Manitoba has a potential, uh, a variety of opportunity for students, including our provincial nominee programs that can help our students establish a long-term residency in the province of Manitoba and also in Canada. In addition to that, we are the largest aerospace center in, in Western Canada tons of uh, um, aero um, space and uh, company, including Boeing, including New Flyers. These are big companies that base in um, our, in our uh, city, Winnipeg. And a lot of our students at U of M actually work and you know uh, get a job there. In addition to this, we also have a really significant growth rate increase in the available tech jobs in the past five years. So um, there's a lot of opportunity for computer science students as well. But in addition to this, um, from if you know anything about Canada, geographically, we are located in the prairie provinces. So tons of um, agricultural industry and food industry that, uh, and actually that is our main industry in the province as well. Now, just to kind of wrap a little bit about the reason why students would choose U of M. Well, first of all, we are um, one of the top, uh, you know, research university in Canada. So therefore, there's a lot of our research that are actually known and recognized um, around the world, including HIV AIDS, Arctic climate change, public health, functional food sciences, for example. So this means lots of great opportunities and for students to engage, you know, domestically and also internationally as well. In addition to that, we have a variety of programs that you can choose from. So, um, you know, we have engineering, business, and uh, faculty of arts, tons of program. We also have um, a lot of program that can help you prepare preparatory studies to enter into law, to enter into, you know, professional programs like nursing as well, for example. 
okay? And for the campus community, we offer a lot of hands-on learning opportunity, including cooperative um, education, work placement options, research and field work. We have over 150 student groups, so students can actually engage, you know, more than just being in the classroom, but rather they build their own community when they're on campus. We have world-class sport and recreation options that you can enjoy, and tons of travel and studies opportunities as well. Great, great. Sujita, it is a great university, and then you have elaborated the answer so well, the student would be benefited. So, Sujita, just tell me now, what are the courses available, UG programs available for the international students? Absolutely. So the, for the program available, and I'm just going to quickly pass through this uh, things to show you the undergrad programs that we have. As I mentioned to you, we have over 100 academic programs. The list of faculty you see here, these are faculties on our campus, okay? Majority of these um, faculties, you'll see that some of them has a maple leaves. Um, so the Maple Leafs um, faculties are the one that's open only to Canadian citizens and permanent residents. Okay. That's including dentistry, medicine, pharmacy, rehabilitation, and dental hygiene. So these are programs that not necessarily open to international students. But other than that, the rest of the programs are actually open to international students. And you notice that the um, program with the rate funds are basically programs that offer what we call a direct entry that allows students to apply directly from high school. The rest of it, including the red fund as well, all of these programs do have advanced entry where students will be applying into once they already gain um, un some university studies. So many of the students wondering, well, how do they get to university to begin with if they're interested in program that may not necessarily have a direct entry? then they'll come to a very unique program called University One. Simply said, it is an undeclared first year option for students that allows students to come in. It's provide a lot of flexibility, flexibility for students to come and choose their first year courses without having to associate or identify the program that they you know, committed to yet. So they'll come in first year, take courses, first year courses that they're interested or that they know will take them to where they wanted to go and then be able to apply specifically into the program after they complete a certain credit hours or certain courses, okay? In the university one, there's first year center support services that basically academic advisor that can sit down with the students. So this option is absolutely great for students who may have more than one options in their mind or maybe they're not quite sure what they want to do. In fact, it's also good for students who are quite focused as well. Um, as you can see in the first year, student can be U1 or direct entry. The courses gained in this program go towards the, um, their degree requirement. So it's part of the degree. It's not an extra year of studies or a pathway as most of uh, students might uh, understand it that way. So these are the programs that we offer. Good. Jita? How the student can get the more information about all these courses? Yes, absolutely. And this is where I wanted to take, I actually prepared quite a bit of uh, websites and web page for you guys to see. The best place to find all of this information is to go to our um, umanitoba.ca. I'll show you some, okay, for example. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of this no menu at the top here. Okay, so for example, if you go to, um, if you want to find information about co-ops, which I'm sure will be coming to it, yes. you can find it on our website, go to umanitoba.ca and quickly do a, a search for the top, uh, topic that you're interested in. You'll be uh, linked or direct to the website in, uh, right away. Yeah. Rita, my next question was about the co-op program only. And just as Perfect. brief about the, what is the co-op program and how okay. students can, can apply for that. Absolutely. Now, uh, many of you have heard about co-ops and internship and wondering what they mean, okay? 
cooperative education is an option for our third and fourth year students to be able to gain practical work experience as part of their um, programs. So they will be, you know, actually experiencing um, working in the industry in the area of studies related uh, directly and at the same time get to uh, get paid as well. So co-op is a paid work experience. So the way it works here is that uh, you uh, students will actually be able to start applying for co-ops once they have gained certain credit hours at the university. So um, to clarify, student will not be applying to co-op as they're applying to university, but rather they will be already become a university students before they can apply to co-ops, okay? Now at U of M, there's quite a number of co-op programs available in the faculty. For example, Faculty of Agriculture and Food Sciences, Faculty of Architecture, Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Engineering, um, Clayton Riddell, Faculty of Environment, Earth and Resources, Faculty of Science and of course, Asper School of Business. Now for to learn more about the um, eligibility, how to apply, I would highly recommend students go to this website and then click on to learn more about each specific co-op. But essentially the way it works is that student will have to gain some credit hours prior to applying. Now the second common question we get asked is, what's the difference between co-op and internships? Internship are more likely the work experience that students are required to do. They not necessarily get paid, but they do gain that sort of work experience. As, and normally internship is part of the requirement in order for students to graduate, where, whereas co-op is actually optional. Students don't actually have to do co-op to graduate. They can just graduate without doing co-op. Okay, great. Ritra, co-op is the always a attraction for the international student. And then University of Minnesota provides the facility for the international student to go for the co-op programs. Absolutely. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, again, reconfirm about the fact that we are research intensive. So a lot of students think about co-op, they think about work experience, but in reality, there's so much more re opportunity in research that students can absolutely participate participate as well. The best thing about research is that, you know, we are a research intensive university. Professor teaching a student on campus, they are a researcher themselves. So the direct link is like right there. So I just kind of like want to advertise about this as a, another big venue as well that we have a lot to offer. Great, great. great. Lisa, just brief about the, inter to the international student, about the intakes available for admission. Absolutely, and I'll then get you back to the um, presentation. Okay, that's where we are right now. In terms of intake, okay. Now for this upcoming fall of 2020 intake, I just wanted to let you know that uh, um, most of our programs do have um, fall intake, okay. Now, most of our direct entry, I just wanted to focus on direct entry right now because that's where, you know, um, for the time being, we want to focus on that. And the direct entry eligibilities are basically students coming directly from high school. For those of you who are taking CBSE this year or the um, state board examination, those kind of things, definitely you can apply. And right now, most of our direct entry program, the deadline has passed since um, March the 1st. Having said that, University One is still accepting application for the fall 2020. Now, one of the, of course, most concerned, especially for you guys right now, is the fact that CBSD Rizal has been postponed. Um, I just wanted to give an update out there that we, admission team is aware of that issue, and they know that the, um, the, the most update information we have is that uh, it will be in June when the CBSD, um, you know, committee would be able to kind of give us more of an update, and we are definitely We'll, be, we'll do our best to try to accommodate and help the students, you know, when you apply to us this year. So just so you know, if you're still interested in coming this fall 2020, and I can rest assured that the University of Manitoba will be operating and everybody will be able to start uh, their studies this fall, okay? Great. We're still figuring out the creative strategy to help students kind of, you know, arrive on camp, uh, arrive and be able to succeed once they arrive on campus. So we are um, working on, you know, um, 
developing strategies and thinking about the format, things like that. Once all of this information is certain, we definitely will be sure to share with, it, with everyone. So coming back to, sorry, your question about intake. So right now, university wants still accepting the fall intake. Now, if you guys, if the students in, you know, may not be feel comfortable to start this fall and want to postpone it, definitely we also have a winter intake and May intake as well. You might notice that the um, winter intake and May and and uh, summer intake has less programs because um, essentially our beginning of the year academic year is actually the fall term. Now, having said that, these are direct entry for advanced entry programs. For so for those students who have done more than a year of post secondary, they can also um, most of the fall term right now the application deadline has. Pass. So the next time they're going to have to wait until next year to apply if they have more than a year of post secondary, or they can apply into winter and summer for those specific programs like arts and science and you know general studies, for example. Great, great. Rita, you have uh, given so much of information. The student would be curious to know what is the admission requirement. Absolutely, that's a good yes. question. And for the purpose of this per, uh, of this uh, presentation, I'm going to talk specifically about the um, admission requirements for, um, maybe we can talk about English proficiency as we come to it as well, but for now I'm going to be talking about the requirement, um, admission requirements. As I mentioned earlier, for most of the students from India, we will be using your grade 12 mark sheet. We will not be looking at your grade 10, grade 11, or anything like that, okay? We'll be basically, we will be based our admission criteria out of your year 12 mark sheet. So majority of you will be taking state board exam, will be taking CBSE. That's basically is what we use, okay? Um, as you can see here, for to meet university one admission requirements, we want to see, um, equivalent minimum of 70% average over the top three senior level in your year 12, okay? We don't convert the grade, we take it as face value, okay? You notice that we don't look at every single courses you have in your CBSE, but rather the top three. So if you can identify the top three, definitely, and if, if it's over 70%, you'll meet admission requirements as long as your, your English or first language literature literature course is at least 60%. Now, some of the students here, um, very common in India where students asking, do I need math? You know, the answer is to get admission to university one, as you can see, there's no specific subjects required here except the English, right? So therefore, without mathematics, you still be able to apply. And perhaps if you meet admission requirements, you will get admitted to university one. Now, but just to clarify that, for example, if students are interested in doing computer science, for example, the idea is that in the first year, they'll be doing uh, calculus math in university, and therefore that course alone require prerequisite um, high school mathematic prerequisite. So in that case, you do want to have, you do want to make sure that you have math from high school. If you don't, what can you do? You can get uh, admitted into U1 and then upgrade your high school math as you are coming into university. Great, that is the additional information you have given to the students and it would be useful for them. So since you have mentioned the 60% in English, is it any extra English proficiency requirement apart from this? Yes. Okay, because um, students who were born outside of Canada, uh, well, sorry, going back, because English is the um, medium of instruction in, um, you know, at our university, and therefore, this English proficiency is kind of there to ensure that students are going to be succeeding. So I don't want students to feel like, oh, this is another huddle. It's certainly, you know, but, but it's to ensure that everyone will be able to succeed, will be able to understand the instruction, and therefore, this uh, requirement is there to make sure that happen. Okay, as you can see here, we accept quite a variety of uh, English language tests. Okay, so for students from India, you will be required to uh, submit a proof of English proficiency and meet our English proficiency requirements. Okay. Now, um, one of the probably the most concerning question everybody have right now is that, well, both TOEFL and IELTS and most of the English tests that they know 
are unfortunately not really available online, okay? I just wanted to let you know that at this point, the particularly for the fall 2020, if you're interested, um, admission team has developed and make this sort of like a new um, acceptance to the uh, Duolingo, which is an online test, English test. So if you are planning to um, take the Duolingo English test online, I just want to let you know that it is acceptable and the score we're looking at is 115 as a minimum requirement. So Sujita, do you have any specific module-wise requirement also in terms of IELTS score, like speaking, reading, writing, any specific requirement? No, uh, our admissions basically based entirely out of only two criteria in, for a student from India coming directly from high school. One is the um, grade 12 mark sheet, which basically as, uh, will be we will be assessing for academic requirements and the English proficiency. We don't take SAT, we don't take ACT, we don't take um, letter of recommendation, we don't look at uh, extracurricular activities and just so you guys understand the reason behind this is as a university, public university, we want to be as uh, ob objective as possible so that it's very transparent, it's very clear how one student get admitted while the other don't, you know. So we don't, we try to make sure that everything is very transparent, it's very easy to justify. These are great. So you have given so much of information about the university, about the courses, now student would be eager to know how the student can apply and what would be the admission process. Absolutely. And this I'm going to kind of take you guys back to the uh, website. Okay. Because there's quite a bit of um, work to be done as well. Okay. Now, first of all, I want to take you to the, um, okay, just a second. There we go. I want to take you to this page, okay, which is the um, admission um, website. If you go to umanitoba.ca, just click on admission and basically select international admission. It will take you to this page. Okay. This is where, first of all, you can find information about um, admission requirements, okay, and also, um, also quite a bit of you know, question and answer here. Now, with regard to application process, basically you're going to have to uh, do some research online to identify the program you're interested. And as you can see from the beginning, you'll see that the um, you will be applying to a faculty and you will be applying online. Okay. The website that you're going to be, oh, and here is a step here, right here. Okay. So you'll see that first step is you want to explore the program you're interested, review the requirements, and then you will apply. Okay. To apply, and if you follow this, you see it's very simple. You click apply now, it will basically take you to the um, University of Manitoba application for admission page here. You'll see a list of program. You just click on the program and simply apply, okay? You also, I'll give you an example. If you go to university one right now, okay? You'll see that there also, you can see the application deadline. And in fact, you can find admission requirements right here as well. You might notice that there is an upcoming change for fall 2021. So just a disclaimer out there, we are admission for university one and certain program will change in 2021. And it's definitely, if you are planning to apply next year, you want to make sure you review this document. Okay, to apply, simply click ready to apply. That's all. Great. Sujita, now student knows how to apply, what would be the admission procedure? The main cause of concern, especially for the Indian student, what about the tuition fee? Okay, perfect. Good okay. questions. Yes. And that's actually one of the reason, you know, one of the our strengths, because our tuition cost is um, pretty affordable. And I'm just going to kind of take you here. Okay. Yes. This yes. is our estimated cost for first of first year and potentially for very much you know, you can imagine, you can, I guess, expect that the first year is going to be the most expensive year because you basically going to end up taking the most number of courses. So just to show you, and this is all in Canadian dollars. I um, unfortunately didn't quite have time to uh, do the conversion into, uh, you know, uh, rupees yet. Yeah, sorry about that. But hopefully you can use this and do the, um, a little bit of a conversion yourself. Yeah. Our tuition fee is ranging between, as you can see here, $14,800 um, per year 
to $22,600 per year. I can tell you that the low end would be in the area, area related to Faculty of Arts, like humanity arts, for example, programs like language and you know psychology, things like that will be on the low end because a lot of the courses students do are going to be based by lecture courses. The high end there, 22,000, that's engineering, you know, um, and the reason is because there's a lot of courses in engineering that requires um, specific lab component, for example, or they require equipments or lab fees, those kind of things add on to the um, tuition quite significantly, and that results um, in the chain, in the varia, variation of our uh, tuition. Um, our tuition at U of M is calculated by the type and number of courses. So in one year, you'll be taking two or three semester. So we base this tu tuition out of the subject. So that means, you know, if you are planning to span this subjects of 10 subjects across three semester, you end up paying about the same. So there's no difference in terms of the number of terms, but rather the number of subjects that you take. In addition to that, you see that there's also book and supplies that this, you know, you can expect that you're gonna be spending. The book and supply and student fees, we base it out of the fact that uh, including your uh, student health insurance, and this will ensure that students are going to be taken good care of when they're in Canada. If they are sick, they can go to see a doctor without having to pay uh, money to see the doctor, okay? The um, health insurance also cover medications, you know, prescribed medications, um, a big majority type of 80% of it basically. And also it's covered dental fees, um, eye exam, things like that. So it's covered quite a variety of things that student can really benefit from. So I, I would say it's absolutely um, a must and it's actually mandatory. Um, the student fee here is also include a U pass, which is basically a bus pass. So student, when they come to U of M, they don't have to worry about buying a bus pass or you know worried about a um, transportation anymore because the student fees including U pass and also um, gym pass as well. So gym pass is part of what student pays. Okay. Now you see that we also add residence option as well. We do offer residence on campus, and but this is optional, like students don't necessarily have to stay on campus, they can stay off campus if they wish, but if they are planning to stay on, on campus and if they are first year students, the meal will come uh, included. The food is included in the uh, meal plan, in the uh, residence um, cost, okay? And I also, we also give an um, example of homestay as well, if they are interested in homestay, great opportunity for students to learn the culture, the host families can you know, walk you around, show you things, and absolutely wonderful experience. I myself, when I first came to U of M, I actually started off being with the homestay for two weeks. And by the time, the end of the two weeks, I know where to shop. I know where the grocery stores are. I know um, how to catch the bus, all those kind of things, absolutely, um, you know, beneficial. So we're looking at the total, as you can see, here I calculated uh, down below there for you. But uh, as you can see, we're offer one of the probably most affordable cost of tuitions across Canada. Great. So besides have, you are having lower fees, you are having some financial assistance also in terms of a financial aid and award. Would you yes, know? okay. Yeah, in terms of financial aid and awards, another great, um, well, actually, yeah, I can show you on our website, okay? I'm gonna come over here. So again, go to yourmanitoba.ca, click on student support and click on financial aid and awards. This is where you can find a lot of information. Um, when it comes to award opportunities, you know, I would like to kind of clarify this out a little bit. There's two main category, depends on where you are in the, um, your study journey, okay? When you apply to us, okay, at the time of admission, we offer the entrance awards, okay? In the entrance award, you can see that for international students, okay, we have, um, okay, so we have the entrance scholarships for international students as well, okay? And uh, I just wanna kind of put you to this here, okay? For the entrance scholarships, it's only applicable for the fall term and it's come automatically 
um, when you apply for the fall term before March the 1st. So unfortunately for this year, fall 2020, the deadline for scholarship has passed since March the 1st. Okay, so those of you who apply before March the 1st, if you're eligible and uh, you, you know, and you get an admission offer, you probably will be expecting to receive an entrance scholarship offer anytime soon. Okay, usually um, the entrance scholarship offer usually get issued about um, a couple days after um, admission offer is out. Okay. Okay. Coach Rita, you have all the all the details about the University of Manitoba courses, requirement, admission procedure, core program, English proficiency, tuition fees, and award. So definitely a student would be benefited by all this information. So I must thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have spared the time and then given so much of time for the benefit of international student. Once again, I should thank you and it would be more benefit for the student. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kashuria, and best of luck to you all. And you know, stay safe. Once we have more updates of the uh, our what's going to happen in the fall, we will ensure that we will post it on a website. So a great place to go to is umanitoba.ca/slash/covid19 uh, um, to learn more about the updates of uh, regarding COVID. Thank you so much, Italy. Thank you so much. Thank you.